right. came for the broken, not for the uh, for those who thought they weren't broken. Mm -hmm. um, when we were there, we spent uh, some time in that area, and I was impressed with the number of children that these uh, women had. Yes, yes. So the kids are a part of the overall ministry mix, right? Yeah, it's it, it's like a community, and and our we have a little bit different philosophy uh, than some of the other organizations, and we believe that God can move in that whole area. It's a community. They have yeah. there's families, there's yeah. children, yeah. you know, and and uh, some organizations they you know they want to take the girl out, but if you take the girl out, there's another girl that's going to come in that area. Yeah. So we're seeing now God move in the hearts of some of these ladies who have come to Christ. Then are going to church and bringing other uh, sex workers to church, and we're ministering to their children. We have a teens program right in the red light area, and we've had 11 kids except Christ. Hmm. Uh, you know, and uh, their mothers are, are sex workers. Is there a way out for for these these women? There is, there is. Um, right now, uh, I have one of the ladies uh, who has got saved, and she's working with me uh, down with the kids at the, at the train station, and she loves that. Uh, we're now planning on. Um, uh, a jewelry business uh, taking 25 to 30 ladies and we're going to we're going to show them how to make jewelry and we're, they're going to sell the jewelry and this is going to be a source of income for them but it's not just so much the the business end of things there will be a time of ministry a time right. of prayer and uh, and a time of fellowship but to be able them. to support themselves in ways other than selling their bodies that's right and, and it's very sad because I mean some of these women sell sell their bodies for about 80 cents right. to 90 cents yeah. and and you know and, and it's really sad huh. Now, what I find fascinating about you, Stuart, is that um, for 16 years you were a letter carrier. Yes, with Canada Post. With Canada Post. Yes. Uh, so you're, you're, you're out there, it's a healthy lifestyle, walking in the sunshine and the rain, Yeah. winter and summer. Yeah. Uh, in fact, Walt Disney was asked one time what he would prefer to do if he were to live his life over again. He said, I want to do what my brother did, and his brother was a letter carrier. Wow. Yeah, he loved, uh, he loved the appeal of the open air mm -hmm. and uh, uh, getting <laughs> to know the neighbors and all that kind yeah. of stuff. But anyway. Uh, how is it that a letter carrier mm -hmm. ends up in Calcutta for the last 10 years? Well, there was a point in our lives after we got married that my wife and I got serious with God, and it was a total Holy Spirit transformation. And we said, Lord, we don't have a lot to offer, but we will go anywhere and do anything for you. And we knelt down in our living room on a couch, and we committed our life. We were crying. We were weeping, and, and you know, we were fasting and praying, and, and we really meant it. We really do want to make the rest of our lives count for the Lord. And got involved with the local street mission there in London, Ontario, and uh, you know, from there to, to Calcutta, India. And when I look at the two, like delivering junk mail for Canada Post, excuse me, Canada Post, mm -hmm. um, to delivering the gospel, there's no other comparison. <laughs> no, I, I would, and, and, and how and why Calcutta? How did that happen? Well, we started praying and uh, you know, we went to you know, some of the missions conferences and mission fast and you know, then uh, we heard about India and how uh, there was such a great need for, you know, for work and, and, and ministry in that area, but there was very few uh, people actually in, uh, in India. So yeah. our hearts started stirring in. And uh, I met with a, a lady that you know very well, uh, Dr. Helda Buntain, mm -hmm. and she just told me about Calcutta and our hearts started again stirring. And I went on a, on a short-term missions trip in 97 and about a week after being there, uh, God confirmed in my heart. I called my wife on the phone and said, honey, pack your bags, we're going to Calcutta. And she said? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I qualified okay. Yeah. I mean, did she embrace it as readily as you did? Uh, well, I, the, I went on the scouting trip. If I think if she, if she had a came with me on that scouting trip, yeah. we wouldn't be going back to, to Calcutta. Really? On that first trip, yeah, 100%. So, I mean, but it was after a while, God, again, everything has to be confirmed by the Holy Spirit. And, you know, we're one. My wife and I are one. So it has to, everything has to gel, right? And your, your three kids, how, how are they uh, uh, coping with life in Calcutta? I mean, it, it's difficult. It's got its, uh, it, it's got its struggles for them, you know, and uh, they have to deal with the heat and the pollution just like we do, you know. But they've got some good friends. They've got some really good close friends there in Calcutta. They're all, they're all Indian friends, so, yeah. yeah. Now, in fact, we have a few pictures here, uh, Stuart. Maybe you could just walk us through these. Now, this is, uh, this is some of your street kids? Yep, these are, these are actually the kids uh, from the Hara, Hara train station. And, um, and we have a couple of feeding programs that are going on, um, actually right at the station, uh, at a small restaurant there, and also at our small center, uh, we do the same thing. We have a feeding program, we have a breakfast program, and then we have uh, a lunch program. And this is Yeah, these are some of the, the be beautiful kids that, uh, you know, that, that uh, are 
you know, have been abandoned and are living down at the down at the train station and the train tracks and and um, you know and uh, God loves them and that's uh, that, that picture is just actually underneath the uh, underneath the Hower Bridge and there's a couple hundred kids that live down under there. a bridge yeah under the bridge yeah and uh, so we go out and minister uh, to these kids once once in a while is that Anthony there in, yes in that's white yeah, yes that's Anthony yeah can we go back to the shot of the kids praying I, I just want to sit on that one for a minute um, you know I there there we go um, that that picture speaks a thousand words. I mean, what, are, what have they got to pray about? What have they got to hope for? I mean, if there's anybody on the planet who be, should be saying, well, God doesn't exist, it's them. I know, I know. But you know, the, these kids, they, um, I think they have great faith. I think children have great faith. And, um, you know, and when we work with them and pray with them, uh, you know, we pray that God would move in their life and that would protect as they're out on the train tracks, that God would just protect them and keep them safe. And and uh, and they believe that I, with all my heart. They they know that God loves them very much. Let's talk about India in general terms. Though getting into politics, um, the view of India here in the West increasingly is that it's becoming uh, a high tech uh, mecca. Right. Mm -hmm. it's, it's becoming very modern. Yes. Uh, very affluent. Yes. All of that is true in pockets, but we're talking 1.3 billion people here. Generally speaking, poverty is rife, right? Yeah, it is. I, I do believe that we're somewhere around 400 million people living below the Indian standard poverty line. 400 million? 400 million people, yes. Which is more than a population of the U.S. Yes. Um, uh, I was in Bihar state yes. uh, before coming to Calcutta, yep. right up there on the border uh, on the, in the north there. Um, about 90 million people living there, That's right. and most of them living on less than a dollar a day. That's I, right. I don't yeah. think I've seen such widespread poverty in my yeah, life. Yeah, B Bihar is a very, uh, is a very difficult place to uh, to live and to and to work. Uh, you know, and and then while I was there, there was quite a furor over Christians. Um, mm -hmm. In some of the states, there was actual uh, open. Um, Violence and persecution mm -hmm. to the point where secular state television and also the newspapers were talking and writing about it. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, looking at it uh, with a dim view. Mm -hmm. they, they, in some cases, I think they, they're, the journalists were embarrassed by this. Mm -hmm. But apparently, if I got the, got it straight, there's over 30 million Christians in India. That's right. Yep. Which is stunning. I didn't expect that. Yep. 30. Well, it's I think two two percent, two and a half percent of that one point. Uh, yeah. And and. Uh, the, getting back to the slumdog millionaire, the, the, um, uh, the fact is that most Indian kids uh, mm -hmm. are not affluent. They're growing up, not necessarily at the ra railway That's station, right. but That's right. yeah. they're, they're growing up. Poor in, families and villages and, yeah. and uh, you know, just having enough, barely enough money to, to feed themselves every day. You made an interesting comment in the green room about the Indian view of slumdog. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I, I'd like you to share that with us as it relates to the love affair that uh, mm -hmm. they see the West having with poverty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, well, I think when, when, when you grow up there, I th life is difficult and uh, because of the masses of population, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, not everybody has money and like the, the poverty is, is through there that uh, people don't have enough money to, you know, to, to help that person or to do that. They're barely surviving feeding their own families. And so, um, you know, uh, I just think maybe sometimes they just don't understand us being from the West, uh, you know, how we see that because we have affluence, you know, we want to, we want to have, we have money, so we want to, we want to help. They don't understand why we'd want to help. I, I'm not sure about that. Like I, I, you know, it's a good question, you know. I guess when you're, when you're surrounded by over a billion people, most of whom are impoverished, yeah. uh, it's overwhelming. I mean, yes. you, you would look at poverty and say, well, that's just a fact of life. There's nothing you do yeah. to change it. Mm -hmm. Then these these people from the West come in and want to want to change it, and yeah. they're saying, "Well, good luck, guys. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, where are you going to start?" Yeah, yeah. What kind of um, uh, of a reaction or, or uh, acceptance or rejection uh, do you get from uh, local Indians in Calcutta when they find out about what you're doing? Well, they're very supportive because um, they see that we're there to do good. We're not there to, uh, you know, to take anybody's job or to you know, uh, to do anything that's, you know, that's wrong. We just, we're just there to help. And uh, they see us as, uh, you know, uh, like the Howard train station. I, I can go down there and I know some of the police down there and the officials and 
Um, and there's been absolutely no problem of mm. us going down there and working with the kids. Just uh, uh, 30 seconds. You, you're uh, about to move into a whole new ministry center, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. Beautiful new building. Yeah. Uh, actually, that's a story in itself. Yeah. But what, what, uh, what do you intend to do out of that place? Okay. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use one of those rooms and we're going to have the, uh, the facility there for uh, the jewelry business, which we're going to take these ladies to come up, we're going to train them, and this is going to be their working and training center uh, for the red light area. Well, that's, that's terrific. Uh, th this is quite a story, friends. Uh, uh, a young man and his wife uh, working here in Canada, carrying letters for Canada Post, uh, gets a sense that maybe he needs to do something in the bigger picture and finds himself in Calcutta doing what he's doing. It's a terrific story, Stuart, and I appreciate you coming and sharing with Thanks us. Thanks for having me. Thank you.